Hey, hostel managers, is your hostel not showing up as high as you would like in Google search results? Do you want more direct bookings, but realize that travelers would have to click through page after page of Google search results just to find your hostel website? Well, this might be because your hostel website is great at accepting reservations, but it sucks at getting people to actually camp out and spend time with your website. In this video, I'll introduce you to the world of content marketing for hostels so your hostel can rank higher in search. Ah, Google, the modern day librarian for all knowledge on the web. In the same way that real world librarians can help you find the book you need, Google can help you find the website you need most of the time. To understand the way Google works, or in other words, how it makes recommendations to its users, let's say you're visiting a real world library, you know, with books. You're doing a report for school and you need to find out as much information as possible about tennis. And there is a ton of books in the library, so you ask the human librarian to recommend a book. Now, most librarians will make their recommendation based on things like how big is the book? How much quality information is in there? How often do people take it off the shelf? How long do they spend with it? Or how often do they check it out? How often is the book updated? And how many other books reference this book in their writing? Now, Google is very much the same as a real world librarian. When someone searches a website on tennis, it will recommend a website based on how big the website is, as in how many pages of quality information are on there. How often do people click a search result to look at the website? How often do people spin with the website and how often is the book updated? In other words, how well is the website maintained? And perhaps most importantly, how many other websites reference this website by putting a link to it? Now, the only difference between our human librarian and a Google librarian is Google sees nearly every interaction with every website on the planet. It's pretty scary when you think about it. So the problem for hostels and hotels is that Google tends to look at websites as if they were books containing information and knowledge. The more quality information and knowledge that a website has, and the more other websites link to it, the more likely Google will recommend that website in a search to users. So the question is, what kind of book does your hostel website look like to Google? Is it a sales brochure like this one from High Clare Castle? I love Downton Abbey. Or does it look like the complete compendium of all information about your destination? The cruel irony for hostels and hotels is that the ideal website visitor for you is somebody who comes to your website and immediately clicks on book now and makes a reservation. But this looks like a dissatisfied website visitor to Google. As far as Google sees, the visitor clicked on your page and immediately clicked off, hopefully to your direct booking engine. Even though they may have made a booking, you don't get credit for that in the eyes of Google as far as SEO goes. This is called a bounced website visitor. Now, how can you get website visitors to spend more time on your website? We'll get to that later in this video. For the moment, I'm going to show you how you can immediately and simply extend the amount of time that Google sees visitors on your website. Now, for this to work, you will need to have Google Analytics tags installed on your hostel website and your direct booking engine. Now, if you don't have Google Analytics tags installed on your website, you really need to get them. Because in addition to all the valuable data that Google Analytics will provide you about how visitors are interacting with your website, like where they are from, what pages on your site are the most popular, what websites they were on immediately before they arrived on your website, and how long they spent on your website. The tags all allow Google to see this data also. Let me explain this with the analogy of a house. If you don't have Google Analytics tags, Google only sees your website visitor entering your house, but then they see nothing else from that visitor until they visit Google again to do another website search, or they suddenly pop up at another house that has Google Analytics tags or Google AdSense installed. Without Google Analytics tags, your website visitor could be spending hours pouring all over all the juicy content on your website. But as far as Google knows, that visitor just left their computer and went outside to catch butterflies. Dude, can you please leave the butterflies alone? Google Analytics tags are like tiny motion sensors in each room of your house or each page of your website. You're letting Google see which of the rooms of your house your visitors are going to, and in return, they give you valuable data about the activities and actions of all of your house visitors in aggregate. 
in nice, beautiful graph. Now, if your website visitor has Google Chrome, that could presumably give Google additional insight into the actions of your website visitor, but this depends on their privacy settings and a lot of other factors that very few people understand. <laughs> the main point I'm trying to make here is, is that given the fact that Google is the monster search engine on the planet, you should do everything possible to encourage that monster to recommend your hostile website. So now that you have Google Analytics tags installed on your website, you should set up cross-domain tracking or cross-domain measurement as they're starting to call it with Google Analytics tags on your direct booking engine as well. This way, Google will start to understand that your website and your direct booking engine are really the same site. Think about it. Your ideal website visitor, the one that immediately clicks on your book now button, will spend most of their time on your direct booking engine. After all, they have to choose dates, select room types, think about it, what do we wanna do, enter in all of their details and credit card information. If you don't have cross-domain tracking set up, Google will attribute all of that time spent on your direct booking engine as time not spent on your hostile website. To be honest, I don't know if other PMS software with direct booking engines support cross-domain tracking, but we do support it with Hostile Snap, and we are continually working on this to improve the trackability of your website visitors all the way through to the point where the reservation is complete. I know, I know, linking your hostile website to your direct booking engine still isn't going to vastly increase the amount of times visitors spend on your website in the eyes of Google, and your hostile website still looks like a brochure in the eyes of Google. So obviously we need to do more. Let's face it, even though you love everything about your hostel, there's only so many ways that you can describe it in words and only so many pictures you can take. Even then, it's very doubtful that a traveler wants to spend much time reading how great your hostel is. So what else can you do to make your hostel website sticky? Welcome to regional content marketing, my friend. Think about it. You are literally a destination expert in the region where your hostel is located. Day after day, you help guests answer questions about what to do, where to see, where to eat that's near your hostel. And it's what you do. It's the customer service that you provide that makes your hostel so much better than other accommodation providers in your area. It's time to start writing down all of that knowledge. To make your website really shine and have Google see it as a quality provider of knowledge, you need a blog. Now, before you click away thinking that I'm about to assign a whole lot of homework to you, I encourage you to stick around to the end of this video and I will show you a super easy way to create this content for your website with practically no writing at all. And if you're saying, I can't even get my guests to read the reservation cancellation policy, they certainly aren't going to spend time reading my website. Well, the magic of content marketing is, is it doesn't have to be your guests that are doing the reading. Google doesn't care who does the reading and spends time on your website. Google only cares that your website is providing quality information to people who are looking for information about your destination. Now, perhaps you're saying my hostel is located in a very popular destination and I'll never compete with all of the professional writers that have written about this destination. I know, I know. We had that problem at my hostel in San Francisco, but because San Francisco is a super expensive destination, most tourist writing is literally useless to backpackers. So we wrote blog posts that feature the absolute cheapest and freest things to do in San Francisco, the back alley secrets that would only be shared in hostels. This was the type of knowledge that budget travelers and adventure travelers wanted to know about San Francisco. Where to get cheap beer in San Francisco? We got you, first page of Google. How to park and not get towed in San Francisco. We got that too. How to get tickets to Alcatraz last minute when you've been sold out for months. Yep. Our hostel website can even help when you do a search for, I know, some of you will think that this is really crazy. All hostels in San Francisco. Yes, we even posted about our competitors on our website because we think that that's the kind of information budget travelers coming to San Francisco are looking for. By the way, to be fair, we list them in the order of highest rating to lowest. So it just so happens that we're on top, but you can rank the hostels on your website any way you want. The point is, is that when Google sees your website providing quality information, it will start to show higher and higher in search results. And this means more visitors to your website. And this means more direct bookings for your hostel. Now, let me give you a little insight on how to make this work for your hostel website. First, 
If your hostel website is currently one of those super simple websites with a handful of pages, you know, like a brochure, it is time to upgrade to a CMS-based website. CMS stands for Content Management System, and it is what will allow you to easily publish all that destination knowledge on your site. Once this is all set up, all you would need to do is enter the text and the pictures, and you just click Publish. Now, you'll still want to have a nicely designed website with a home page that is very easy for visitors to find and click Book Now, but you'll also want to start filling all of those underlying pages of your website with rich travel information that only you know as a hostel owner in your destination destination. Let us know if you need to find somebody to help you upgrade your hostel website to one with a content management system built in. Okay, so I promise no homework or at least minimal homework if you watch to the end of the video. And before I get to that mind-blowing tip, I would love it if you would consider briefly tickling that <laughs> like button. It really helps our channel grow and get this information to other hostel owners around the world. You know, so we show Google that you like content like this so that we can increase our viewership. Get the parallel? The software that I'm starting to use and make videos with and write the associated blog post is called Descript. This thing is amazing and I will definitely put a link to this in the description. All you have to do is use your phone to record yourself telling one of your guests some of the juicy knowledge about the awesome things to do and the places to see near your hostel. Then you take this video or audio works too and load it into the Descript software. Descript will transcribe the audio and make a text document that you can simply do cleanup and edits on. Yes, as you guessed, it will still frequently confuse the word hostile for hostile like every other voice to text out there. Anyway, all you need to do then is proofread it, copy and paste this text to your new CMS website. See, I told you you wouldn't need to do a bunch of writing. Oh yeah, the mind-blowing part about Descript is that now that you've edited the text document, the video, or audio if that's what you used, is now an edited video. And all the ums and ahs and everything, all the filler words that you put in there have been taken out. If you want, you can post that video to YouTube and then embed the video in your blog post. Seriously, I love this software, and as of the making of this video, I am not an affiliate, so I'm not making any money by recommending Descript, but I have applied to be an affiliate, so if I'm approved, I'll update the link in the description and I'll disclose my affiliate partnership there. So, that's all for this week. Please do me a favor and let me know in the comments what you think. Oh, and by the way, YouTube has changed the terms for community tabs from 1,000 subscribers to 500 subscribers. So we only need to have a few more subscribers and we'll be able to have our own clubhouse of sorts right here on this channel. Even if a free subscription is not right for you at this time, I still really appreciate you taking the time to watch to the end of the video. I hope you learned something and found it worthwhile. Thanks a lot.